I've had some experience with some of your peers and uh, the Liberals, the Greens, Labour Party. And I have to say, it doesn't appear that they always, how shall I say this, by remaining diplomatic, read the legislation that they are making judgments on. Such, things such as the Digital Identity Bill, for example, is something that I'm convinced the Liberals did not understand based upon the way they answered questions about it. Is this lack of care and attention put into politics that dramatically alters the future of Australia? Is there lack of interest in understanding it like a genuinely serious problem because you can't if you can't ask questions and challenge a piece of legislation because the person who wrote it doesn't even understand it that seems to me to be an almost insurmountable problem it is an insurmountable problem and this goes back to what i said before about the men and women behind the curtain that actually pull the strings on these two major parties they also you know i'm not privy to these conversations but what i'm assuming happens is you know they might have meetings and things like this and the men and women behind the curtain will say this is your position or that is your position and that's it so you know the people in the major parties they don't have to be across the legislation just because they get told what to do and what to say so that's how that that uh, obviously works now going to the digital id i'm just going to go off on a tangent um just for a quick second for your listeners here the digital id combined with the central bank digital currency is the single greatest threat to our freedom right now as Australians, the single greatest threat. It is more dangerous. It is more dangerous. And I'm, I cannot stress this enough to your freedom, if you're sitting at home right now watching this, than a standing army at the gate. Because if there was a standing army at the gate, you would know exactly where to direct your anger, your frustration, and, um, and, and your attention. You would know where it would go. But with a CBDC and a central, with a central bank digital currency and a digital ID, your freedoms will be slowly taken away without you even realising it. So you can think of a central bank digital currency as digital money, right? But it's very different to what you have in your internet banking right now because it's based off blockchain technology. This digital money will be programmable. It will be programmable. What does that mean? It means the government will be will be able to see exactly where your money is, where your money goes, how your money is spent, what you spend it on, everything. Now, the truth is, and if we had a, you know, a, a, a benevolent government and, you know, they were all great people, sure, maybe it's a great thing. But the last few years during COVID have shown us that we don't really have that. What happens when the government says, oh, you know, um, because of uh, our net zero commitments uh, this month, you have spent uh, too much money on red meat and you've reached your quota uh, for CO2 emissions, you can't have red meat next month. What happens when these kind of things come in? What happens if the government says, oh, you know, you've reached your CO2 uh, carbon allowance this month, uh, you're not allowed to take that international flight? What happens then? And if you think these things won't happen, then you are very, very naive. We have a government right now that has demonstrated very, very clearly, but they don't give us stuff about your rights and they'll take them away quick smart. So these are the kind of things that we're staring down the barrel of with uh, the digital ID and the CBDC. Very, very, very dangerous stuff. And if you think it's not going to happen here, this kind of stuff already happens in the CCP, in communist China. Yeah, well, so I'd, I'd, like, I to, I'd like to talk about that for a second because this is I'm very passionate about this too. It's one of my main topics of, uh, of inquiry. But you should always design legislation as if your country was being run by Kim Jong-un. Like that's the basic principle mm. that you should use. And I come from a computing background and we always designed our programs and our software that was being used by the public to be used by the most stupid person imaginable because that's how you have to design things. They should be robust and strong. But today it seems to be, let's just hope for the best as a, a policy writing thing, which is not going to work for us.